Hey everyone, welcome back. We are going to move on from sequences to this new idea called a series. So the sum of the terms of a sequence, which you might have been learning all about already, is called a series. So when we say a sequence, we're talking about the list of terms in order and saying what the terms are. For a series, we're actually taking all of those terms and we're adding them all together. These words sequence and series, you hear them often together in the same sentences. Um, they both start with S. People tend to accidentally use them interchangeably. Make sure that you realize when we're talking about a sequence, we're just talking about the list of terms. When we're talking about a series, we're talking about adding up the list of terms that we have. A partial sum is when we add a finite number of terms. So in other words, we don't go on forever. Okay, we will write a partial sum as S sub N and this S will be capital. Usually in some books you'll see it lowercase, but in our videos we're going to go ahead and use a capital S. And that just means the sum of the first N terms. Let's just look at finding a couple of partial sums now. So if I wanted to obviously find the sum of the first term only, well that's just two and there's nothing to add it to, that's just one term. If I want to find the sum of the first two terms, then I add up the first two terms. So my S sub two really says the sum of the first two terms, two plus five gives us seven. Notice seven is not in the list, seven is adding up the first two terms. S three is the sum of the first three terms, so we would add two plus five plus eight, and that would give us 15. If we look at the sum of the first four terms, this partial sum is two plus five plus eight plus 11, and that will give us 26. If we have this formula here that a sub n equals one minus one over n, we want to find S5. In other words, we want to find the sum of the first five terms. Then we'll need to figure out those five terms and we can add them together. So let's first figure out the first term. So a1, would be just plugging into the formula one minus one over one, which would be one minus one, and that's zero. And the second term would be one minus one over two, and that would be a half. And the third term would be one minus one over three. If I'm plugging into the formula, that's gonna be two thirds. The fourth term is going to be one minus one fourth. I think you can probably see a pattern here now, right? So that would be three fourths. And then the fifth term will be one minus one over n, which is one over five, and that will be four fifths. So once I have the first five terms, if I want to find S5, in other words, the partial sum, the first five terms added together, then that is zero plus one half plus two thirds, plus three fourths, plus four fifths. Okay, if we go ahead and maybe get a common denominator for all this stuff, then we'll go ahead and let's change everything to over 60. So we'd have zero over 60, plus multiply top and bottom by 30 here, multiply top and bottom by 20 here, multiply top and bottom by 15 there, and to make 560, we'd multiply top and bottom by 12. Get all of those. And if we add up all that stuff on top over 60, we'll get 163 over 60. We also want to talk to you about the notation that's used when we're summing up terms from a sequence. So our summation notation, which is also known as sigma notation, the reason it's also known as sigma notation is because this object here is the capital Greek letter sigma. And that just means that we're going to be adding up everything that follows. Uh, so we've got sigma telling us we're going to be adding things. I've got my formula, so that'll be what I plug into. Whatever terms I want to find and add up, I'll use that formula to get those. And then I have my index here that tells me I am going to let the variable n start at the number one. That's my lower limit of summation. I start plugging in at the number one. The number on top of the sigma tells me my upper limit of summation. So this statement basically says that we are going to use the formula n squared. We're going to plug in numbers starting at one and stopping at five, and we'll add up everything that we get. Okay, so using this formula, I'm gonna start plugging in at one. So if I plug in one, I'll get one squared. And I'm going to keep plugging in 
values for n until I get to 5. So I would add 2 squared. I would then add 3 squared. I would then add 4 squared. And 5 is my upper limit of summation, so I go ahead and stop. This is my last term, 5 squared. So I've used this formula, plugging in 1 through 5, and the sigma says we're going to add all those things up. And that will give us 1 plus 4 plus 9 plus 16 plus 25. And if we add all those things up, we will get 55. So this sigma notation is basically saying uh, that we're going to sum up the first five terms because we're going from one to five. So that would be another way to say this in partial sum. Okay, let's look at our second example. I've got my formula three times two to the n minus one. We're going to sum up all the terms we get from one to four. So plugging in one, I would get three times two to the, if I plug in one, one minus one would be zero for my first term. If I plug in 2, n equals 2, I would get 3 times 2 to the 2 minus 1, which would be to the 1. And then we'd have 3 times 2. Once I plug in 3, 3 minus 1 would be squared there. And then when I plug in 4, 3 times 2 to the 4 minus 1 would give me 2 cubed there, right? So this is when n equals 1. This is when n equals 2 n equals 3 and n equals 4 and the sigma tells us to add all those things up. Okay, so 3 times 2 to the 0 that would be 3 times 1 plus 3 times 2 would just be 6 here plus this 2 squared is 4 so 3 times 4 is going to be 12. You can see maybe that this is a geometric sequence expression so we're getting terms geometrically so the next one is going to be 24 right 3 times 8 okay and then we'll add all of those together so we'll get 45 for this one this is the same thing as saying because we're summing from 1 to 4 that's the same as saying the partial sum of the first four terms of this one all right, I've got my 5k plus 2. Notice I've got k that I'm indexing now instead of n, but that's fine. I'm just plugging in for k instead of n, no problem. So if I want to plug in for k equals 1, then that would be 5 times 1 plus 2. So that would be 5 plus 2, which is 7. And then if we plug in k equals 2, 5 times 2 would be 10 plus 2. That would be 12. And then if we plug in k equals 3, we'll get 5 times 3, which is 15 plus 2, which is 17. You might recognize this as an arithmetic sequence expression. You can kind of see that pattern in what we're doing here. So when I plug in 4, 5 times 4 is 20 plus 2 gives me 22. And when you plug in 5 and 6, you can probably guess what you're going to get for those already. That's the nice thing about these. A lot of these are very predictable, right? So we should get 27 when we plug in 5, and we should get 32 when we plug in 6. Okay, we go ahead and add all of those up, and we get 117. All right, our last example here. Notice that our index, our lower limit, is starting not at 1. So oftentimes we will do sums uh, where the summation starts at 1. That's not always going to be the case. Sometimes we will start with a different lower limit. Uh, so just be aware and always pay attention and don't assume that you're starting at 1. So in this instance, we're going to start when k equals 0. If I plug in 4 times 0, that's going to be 0. And then the next one, I will go up 1 to k equals 1, right? So then plugging in 1, 4 times 1, and then k equals 2. If I plug in 2, 4 times 2, and then if I plug in k equals 3, then 4 times 3 is 12. And maybe you can see already that this one is arithmetic as well. So plugging in 4 times 4 will give us 16. Stopping at 5, my upper limit, so my last thing I would plug in is k equals 5. 5 times 4 will give us 20. We'll go ahead and add all of those up, and that will give us 60 for this sum. 
Okay, that's some examples of partial sums and sigma notation, summation notation. Hopefully you feel a little more comfortable reading these types of expressions. Thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you in the next video.